Good morning. Welcome to this Monday morning bazaar. Uh, I have with me Mangalam and Nigel. Uh, good morning from all of us. But of course, we're starting on a slightly somber note. The debt count in Morbi touching 140 is extremely disturbing, extremely saddening. Uh, many more are missing. So one hopes the debt count doesn't go up even further. Our commiserations and condolences to everyone, to the near and dear of everyone who have lost their lives in Morbi. Uh, well, uh, Nigel, I can tell you that 40 years ago, when I was in college, there was a huge Morbi flood disaster. Mm. So this rushes back. It, it was one of the biggest disasters of my, uh, you know, childhood. It uh, hard goes out to people who are involved. Over there. Absolutely, uh, Lata. You know, prayers and uh, support and condolences to all those. Uh, you know, our brothers and sisters that have been impacted by this. And we just hope that the debt count doesn't uh, spike up from here on. Uh, you know, a very, very, uh, uh, you know, terrible news, actually, yeah, to say the least. News. Well, uh, Lata, but, uh, you know, it's another tray of trade. Uh, on Friday, we got a good handover from the Wall Street. How are you seeing set up and also some couple of macro details as well did come out? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we have to get back to business and uh, the business news is actually positive. The SGX mm. Nifty itself is indicating that. And this is largely because uh, the handover from uh, US, excellent. Uh, Dow Jones uh, likely to be the best performing, uh, to see its best performance since Jan of uh, 1976. Of course, we have one more day to go. Mm. At the moment, it is the best since May, but it could well be the best since January of 1976. And I think the uh, macro carry forward is the inflation data. US does not, US Fed does not look at its CPI data. It look at, looks at its PCE inflation, hmm. personal final consumption expenditure. Um, in, that also indicates an inflation. That's the inflation number they take. And that has come in at five. The core PCE inflation has come in at 5.1. The market was expecting 5.2. So for the stock markets, that is a big positive. It's a good reason why the Fed will stick to the dot plot of 50 basis points uh, hike in uh, December. We, we don't have to discuss November because that 75 is something which uh, the market has completely discounted. But the fact that uh, it could be, uh, you know, a 50 bips hike indicates that they are stepping off from their rhythm. It's been 75 basis for three, uh, you know, uh, FOMC meetings in a row. And the fact that they could step down to 50 is being taken very positively. Actually, uh, if you look at the CME, uh, you know, it's a Fed watch tool. Uh, it looks at how the market is parsing through the Fed fund futures, what the rate hikes are likely to be. And that one indicates uh, as of Friday that uh, there is an increase in the number of people who are even expecting a 25 basis uh, uh, rate hike. Uh, uh, in February, in uh, December. Mm. But the important point is the number of people expecting 75 basis hike has clearly been falling. And uh, that is perhaps is what uh, the tailwind for the markets. Uh, but uh, 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 you tell me, uh, Nigel, how is the trade? Before I come to you, mm -hmm. Mangalam, I know you have important uh, parameters to point out, but domestic parameters. Well, uh, you know, if you look at the Nifty and the Dow, we have been, uh, you know, uh, boasting about that we have been the big outperformers, right? 2022 has belonged to the Nifty in comparison to the Dow. And, uh, you know, that's, that's up for you on the screen. But in the last one month and the last one week, well, we have been underperformers, actually. Mm. If you compare ourselves with Dow, last week we were up only around a percent. The Dow was up close to around 5 percent, and that's the last uh, one, uh, one month performance. Well, the bears, they are putting in a fight at around the 17,850. Last four sessions, when we do trade set up, well, we've been talking about this, and we are going to that level and seeing a bit of a U-turn. But today, the SGX is suggesting that we'll start above that resistance level that we've seen in the last few days. And just pull up the highs of the last few days. It's in that vicinity of around 17,750 and 17,850. Today, the start is going to be above that level, so you'll want to see some kind of follow-through buy. The move that we have seen from around 17,000 to around 17,700 has been led by institutional buy. Make no mistake about that. I look at the DI and the FI data, put it together, and they have been buying on an average crore around 900 crores, you know, in the last 10 sessions or thereabouts, from October 14th to be precise. We're not counting the Marot session because volumes are very, very low. And, you know, some of the bulls will be thinking it was good to have some shots in the system. Mm. Because if you get these gap ups, they'll be forced to get squeezed mm. out. But if that was on their wish list, then on Friday you got some shots in the system. Close to 5,000 contracts were added on the short side. And on that low base, it's a 10% increase. You know, if you look at that, now the short positioning has moved to around 43% on. Short, shots in the system are not such a bad thing. I keep making this point. In mm. fact, it could be a bit of a blessing. The problem for me is they're writing calls as well, telling you that at higher levels, we could see some supply that's coming in. 
given that we have a big event, we have a 500 point range. 17,500 to around 18,000 odd. And the 17,800 to around 18,000 will be a bit of a congestion zone. Let's see whether that can be taken out, whether the bulls want to go into this big event, you know, at higher levels. Because there has been writing being seen at you know, close to around 35, 40 lakh shares being added on both sides. 17,800, 17,900 and 18,000 call. On the downside as well, at around that 17,500, 17,600, as well as the 17,800 uh, put, we have been seeing a fair bit of writing. Till the Nifty holds above the 50 DMA, all is well, and you'll expect the subtrend to uh, move up. Some bit of a time-wise, uh, you know, consolidation will be taken as well. But today, the big cue, Lada, is that we're going to be starting off closure around that 18,000 odd mark, and we'll have to see whether or not those called writers start unwinding their position. That's what could take us higher as well. So that's straight setup. Well, Mangala, that's most else? useful, absolutely. Yeah, go ahead, Mangala, what do you want? For watch? me, I have uh, the globe that I'm watching out for because where the Nifty goes from here is extremely important to watch what the global events are. And that's what's going to take place because we're done with most of the results, barring the three that are coming out today. So near-term domestic queues are very thin. We'll be watching out for global queues. And what is the global market telling you? Uh, the Dow is up 14 and a half odd percent. It's uh, the best month, like you pointed out, all the way since Jan 1976. Uh, I don't think uh, two of the anchors here were born <laughs> at, at that point as well. Perhaps three. We don't know yet. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, you know, having said that, uh, earlier it was Nasdaq which was leading the gains. But this time around, Nasdaq is underperforming. Nasdaq is up just around 5%. So that is something we'll have to monitor going forward. Why is that? Because, you know, the Nasdaq will give you a reason to move only if the street believes that maybe the rate hikes by the Fed will slow down now or the inflation has perhaps peaked out. What will we, uh, uh, you know, have to watch out for that? Well, all eyes on the Fed meet outcome uh, on November 2nd. And the next week, we have the U.S. midterm elections as well. So those are a couple of factors I'll be watching out for. But we get a cue or we get a peek into what, you know, the world is thinking. When you look at a couple of the macros, the U.S. 10-year, that's stabilized around that 4% mark. So is that telling you that, you know, maybe things are looking better? The second one is the dollar index, stabilizing around that 110 from uh, higher levels earlier as well. So is that telling you that we perhaps have, you know, stabilized and the things are better now than they were before? Well, if they are, then the SGX Nifty indicating that 18,000 start may perhaps sustain. And if that sustains, what happens is that the earlier resistance, uh, you know, the list that Nigel put out with regards to the earlier highs, that becomes an important support yeah. zone. And why is that crucial? Because just the same time last month, we were talking about 16,750 to 16,800 being a support zone. And uh, then the support moves 1,000 points higher. If that happens, then we'll, I, I'll just watch out for two things. One, whether the mid-cap index outperforms. Because this month, the Nifty is up 5.5%. The mid-cap index is up just 3.1%. Even on Friday, the mid-caps underperformed. Will the mid-cap index outperform from here? And secondly, will the IT index be the leader going forward? Because the Nifty Bank has done its bit very close to its record high now as well, 8.5% percent. Is the Nifty IT, which yeah. was underperforming so far, has begun to you know catch up a little bit? Will that outperformance continue? You know, or, yeah, my sense, sir, uh, uh, Mangalam and Nigel, is that the market will not take the call of mm. above eighteen thousand or this outperformance before they see the FOMC statement yeah. mm. of November second. That's correct. So I think a seminal move will come more on November third or maybe November second in anticipation. Right. May not be this early because uh, you know the U.S. Fed this last one year has surprised us many times. Mm. Normally, it was very good to go long into a FOMC meeting because the Fed put was behind you. Uh, the in November of 2021, when the Fed pivoted, when Jerome Powell pivoted, right. it was a very big blow to the market. That's when we saw the market falling. Again, there was a pivot in March. Yeah. Again, there was a pivot in September. You know, the September dot plot was a bit out of the blue. The market hadn't expected. So I think people would go to the FOMC. They are, they are expecting that the Fed will say we are stepping off 75 and we are going into 50. But I think they would like to see it. So yeah. maybe big calls will be taken on 2nd or 3rd of November. The only fear, Lada, for me is the way the equity markets have gone, they're clearly, uh, you know, they're, Discounted. they're yeah. expecting the 75 basis points hike. The, if there's any commentary that comes with regard to the next hike, 75 plus 50 will, hmm. will be taken. Yes. But if they sound hawkish and they talk about 275, then that's going to be a bit of an issue, but we have a couple of days to yeah, get to that. The market is uh, not prepared for that yes. eventuality. The other thing that can actually do well for India, perhaps, is the way Chinese economy is. I mean, globally, we, we saw their Chinese October manufacturing PMI that came in at 49. The street was working with 50. Levels upwards of 50 indicate expansion. Lower than that is contraction. So while, or, you know, on a global level, the Chinese economy not doing well, maybe trade negative. 
is it positive for India? Are people looking at India, continuously looking at India because India is outperforming? That is something we'll be watching out for. And closer home, three important results from an economy standpoint. We have LNT, Bharti Airtel, and Tata Steel. The commodity rally has been up for the last one year. What does Tata Steel have to say about that? Has that ended or not? Bharti Airtel will tell you about how consumption patterns are. And LNT, of course, will tell you how you know the CapEx cycle is. So from an economy standpoint, these results will be more important than just the nifty EPS standpoint. Oh, absolutely. I take your point entirely. Though actually the handover in terms of results over right. the last three days has not been all that positive. I mean, we've got very good numbers from Dr. Reddy's Dr. and uh, Tata Power. But uh, there were a bunch of others. You know, Bandhan was not the best of results. Mm. GSW Power was not the best. Yeah. Uh, NTPC was kind of, uh, you know, in line or a little below uh, mm. expectations. So, you know, the earnings season, if you're looking at the last three days, is not giving us a major tailwind. Yeah. At the moment, the tailwind is more global. But as you can, as you say, the next 24 hours are crucial. Well, with that, Mangalam, can we get the equity call of the morning? Let's go ahead. We have uh, Chetan Seth of Namura saying that as long as Chinese equities struggle and assuming global risk on sentiment continues, we are likely to see greater reallocation in Asia towards India despite stretched valuations. And that is something the Chinese data also indicated right now. Korea and possibly Indonesia in the coming week. He says that will, the main focus will be on what the Fed's November FOMC will do, where the Nomura US economics team does not expect any signs of a Fed pivot. Okay. Well, the FOMC meet is important for the uh, rupee, so let's get you a very important uh, rupee call of the morning coming from B. Prasanna of ICICI Bank. Prasanna says the risk sentiment improved and dollar retreated from its peak on market chatter of a future slowdown in the pace of hikes. However, he adds Asian currencies were under pressure, led by the Chinese yuan on weak fundamentals, triggering central banks' intervention. He says the rupee which is under pressure from current account deficit and persistent hedging flows, recovered from its low helped by improved risk sentiment and RBI intervention, says the rupee may remain volatile due to FOMC and is expected to trade between 81.75 and 82.90 for the week. On the bonds, B. Prasanna says global yields fell sharply during the week, expecting slower hikes by Fed post 75 basis points in the upcoming policy and some stability in the United Kingdom. He also says domestic yields have retraced as well, though remaining volatile. He expects a 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 7.3 to 7.5 for the week. All right, well, we have a lot of stock-specific action as well to track for you today, and we'll get to that in just a bit in our top 10 segment. We're looking at Maruti, Dr. Reddy's, Vedanta and Tadapa. They're stocks that could open up in the green on the back of positive news flow. And then we have NTPC, IOC, JSW Energy, MRPL, Blue Dart, as well as Intellect Design. They're stocks that could react a little bit negatively to the news flow that came in the last couple of days. Okay, with that, let's parse the global environment a little more because